So first off today, I have Mary, the oldest of the, the young paints. And what my plan is for them today is to bring them in here, lunge them a little bit first, see if I can get them stopping straight. If you remember the last time they were wanting to swing their butt out and come to me. So I'm gonna use this fence over here and see if I can get them to just stop straight. And then I'd like to do a little bit of confidence building work and teach them to, if, if they get nervous about something, I like my horses to stop and look at me and not be reactive. So we're gonna work on like a plastic bag and a tarp to start with today and see how far we get with that. I don't expect there to be a problem because like I said before, their previous owner did a whole lot of groundwork with them. So I'm sure they've probably seen all this stuff before, but I just wanna check in and see how they react to it. And then hopefully I'll be able to saddle each of them if they respond well to the other things. So I'm just gonna start with him. I'm just gonna send him off a little bit and warm him up. Good boy. Good. Go ahead and ask him to pick up a trot. Good boy. Oh, he has to keep going the same direction I ask him to go. He can't change when he wants to. I don't mind too much in the beginning. If they want to pick their speed, it's fine. But he has to go the same direction I ask him to. Now I'm going to push him again past this side where he keeps wanting to stop. And then on the other side, I'll ask him to walk. Good boy. And walk. I'll just reel him in a little bit. Good boy. And then keep him going. Walk. Walk. Good boy. And I'll have him walk another circle as long as he stays walking. Back over to that wooden rail. And then I'll ask him to stop while he's up against the fence. And what I do is I'm using the fence to kind of block him from swinging his hind out. Ooh. Good boy. Ooh. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but he was very sensitive to my body position. I was kind of coming a little bit forward of center. When you're driving, you, you are behind his center line. And I was a little bit, he's still not sure about the cookies. <laughs> um, in preparation for asking him to stop, I moved forward of his center. And he took that as a cue to stop. I didn't even say whoa well or ask him to. But I'm going to give it to him because my that was what my body position was telling him, was that we're going to stop. And so that's great. That's what I'm looking for is a horse that's going to read me, and I'm not going to have to get after him or correct him with the line or anything like that. And since he was up against the fence, he stopped straight. And I, what I don't want to do is change my body position to where I'm going to ask him to stop. And then if he starts to stop, push him forward. Then you're going to be teaching him to, to ignore that position. And so that was great. I wanted to, to re definitely reward him for that, for paying such good attention. So now I'm going to go ahead and change directions on him. Good boy. Okay, I'll ask him to pick up a trot. Good boy. And he's lunging nice. There isn't any slack in the rope, but he's not pulling on me either. He's just going right, right to where the end of the rope is and then not pulling anymore. I'm gonna ask him to keep trotting because I'd like him to kind of move around and get warmed up. Ah, oh, there we go. I knew there had to be a little bit of playfulness in there somewhere. Good boy. I'm going to go ahead and ask him to walk. Walk. Good. Nice response. Good boy. So he's a really fast learner, and I'm real pleased with, with how he's doing. Now, as I come around to this uh, wooden side over here, 
I'm going to ask him to stop over there again. Ooh, perfect. And I'll give him a cookie because I want to always reward them. In, in the beginning, when I'm first teaching him to stop straight, for one, woe is important overall. And then also encouraging them to stop straight. If they, if when they stop and come to me is when they get the reward, then it's going to encourage them to want to just always come into me. And I don't like my horses to just swing their butt out and come into me. When I ask them to stop on the lunch line, for safety reasons, I really make a big deal about when I say whoa, I mean that means stop right this second. Because you never know as you're going around lunging your horse, something may have happened or come undone or you never know. And so if you have a horse, if you say whoa and your horse wants to swing their butt out and run into you, it could be end up being potentially kind of dangerous if there's some sort of issue going on. So I make a point that when I say whoa, I want you to stop straight right where you're at. Secondly, it helps with your in-hand work. If you do decide that you want to go on to doing like leg yield and shoulder and haunches in, in hand, it's really important that your horse isn't constantly trying to swing their butt out and come into you. you. You need to make sure that your horse can stop straight, can walk with you and all kinds of other things. So he's not at that point where I'm doing that with him yet, that I'm going to do the in hand stuff, but eventually I'd like to. And so I want to have that, that preparation there, that I, he'll stop straight and not try to just run over into me every time that I, I ask him to whoa. So I'm going to go ahead, we'll start with the plastic bag, and then depending on how that goes, we'll move on into the tarp. Now I'd like to give you a little bit of introduction of what I'm trying to do here. I don't like to use the term desensitizing. I think that oftentimes the concept of desensitizing is misused, and the truth is that you're never going to be able to desensitize your horse. To everything they may come across, especially if you're talking about a trail horse that's going to be going down the road or something like that, or especially if you want to take your horse to shows, you can never possibly desensitize your horse to everything out there. It, it just isn't, you know, you may have them really well desensitized to the blue tarp in here, and you go down the road and the neighbor's got a green tarp and then forget it. What I like to do, I call it building confidence instead, because it's not about not being afraid of this scary thing. What it's about is when you're scared or when something upsets you, stop and I will fix it. Because it's, it's natural for the horses to want to move away from it, I teach them that if they stop, I'll take it away. And this is especially valuable if, you, if your horse ever, God forbid, gets caught up in something or they get, they get themselves tangled up in a, in a rope or wire or whatever. If your horse still has that instinct of wanting to, to move away from it, they're going to make the situation worse. If you've reprogrammed your horse's instinct to stop when something upsets them, then you have the opportunity to go in there and help untangle them and help fix whatever the problem is. And so it's not just about desensitizing to a plastic bag or to a tarp. It's about teaching the horse to stop and, and I'll take it away. Okay. Now, the other point I want to make is a lot of people use a plastic bag, they try to desensitize them, and they try to move them away. And I could go on a really, really long lecture about how stupid that is. I'm not going to do that in this video, but I will tell you, pick one or the other. Move your horse away from the plastic bag, but then don't expect your horse to be confident going past a plastic bag in the bush. Okay? So, they may not necessarily be afraid of it, but when they hear that plastic bag, the first reaction in their mind is going to be to move. Because if you've moved them away from the plastic bag and you've used that to lunge them, that's going to be their first response. When they hear that plastic bag rustle, their first thought is going to be that you want them to move. On the other hand, I like it. When they hear that plastic bag rustle, I want them to, go to, to stop and to go, hey, if I stop, I might you know, get a cookie. And that, that's how I like my horses to, to be thinking because it, it keeps them it, safe. Where if I have them a novice handling them, I know that you know, the horse isn't going to run off if there's a plastic bag in the bush. Okay, I would much rather the horses be thinking about me and what I might be doing and you know, just, just staying more with me instead of thinking that they should just move off from, from a stimulus. Okay? And it, it's, the, the plastic bag is, is think, of it not so, think of it as commotion. Think of it not so much as even a specific noise or a specific sight or anything like that, but think of the plastic bag as representative of commotion. And I like my horses to move off when I give from a cue. Okay, I like to teach them a cue. This is the cue to walk on. This is the cue to trot. This is the cue to canter and so on. Okay, 
I don't like to teach my horses to move away from commotion. If you're teaching them to move away from the plastic bag, like I said, the noise and the sound and, and the flashing and rustling is representative of commotion. And so I prefer the horses when there's commotion, when you're in doubt, when, when there's something going wrong or something crazy, stop. And then the horse is, is much safer for other people to be around, including yourself. And so, like I said, I'm not going to go on a super long rant about that, but hopefully that kind of gives you a little bit of an idea that I really recommend. Choose one or the other. Don't move your horse away from the plastic bag one day and then another day expect them to stand still and then the next day move them away from it. Okay, pick one or the other. So, for my horses, I want them to stay standing. Okay, I should be able to wrestle this all over, both sides, legs, head, tail, back, belly, everything. Okay, but I'm not going to do it all at one time because it's going to overwhelm him. Okay, or even if he doesn't care about it. But, but for another horse that maybe does, is a little bit, yeah, I don't know about this, they're going to be totally overwhelmed. The biggest mistake that people make when trying to do this is they put, might put the, the plastic bag on the horse's back or the shoulder or side or whatever wherever they start out with and the horse gets a little bit nervous and the horse moves away and then they get the horse to stop and instead of removing the stimulus as soon as the horse stops they continue on they go okay now I'm going to rub it down your back or I'm going to rub it down your, your side or your hind or whatever don't do that it's just going to encourage your horse to move away from it instead of stop and look at you okay when your horse stops take the stimulus away okay and then build up to it I can guarantee you, you will train your horse to plastic bag this way. I have worked with horses that have been scared to death from the get-go of anything like a plastic bag and no one can get them near it or get them to stand still. And I have been able to get a lot of really difficult scared horses to be totally calm and comfortable with the plastic bag using this method. Depending on the level of the horse's fear, it could take one 15 minute session or it could take a week or two. You know, it's going to depend on the history of the horse, but this method has, has never failed me. I have, it has worked with tarps, plastic bags, all that kind of stuff with every horse I've come in, in contact with, okay, and used it on. So I'm just going to start on the side over here. And I'm just going to make a little noise. Good. Now see how I don't do much? If I start going crazy, it's going to overwhelm him and he's going to think that I want him to do something. So I do a little bit and then I say, oh, good boy. That was it. Nothing's going on. Nothing's happening. I'm going to wave it again, and then you build up the pressure, and then I say, good, good boy. Okay, now I'm going to touch him on the, on the withers, good boy, and I'm just going to rub him a little bit, and release, good boy. I'm going to go back to the withers, and I'm going to touch him down his back, good boy, and I'm going to release. Good, good job, good boy. I'm going to bring it back to his back again. And I'm going to touch him down by his tail and his hind. Up back to his back and withers on his shoulder. And I'm kind of making a little noise with it too. And I'm going to say, good boy. Good. Okay, I'm going to go back to his shoulder, go up his neck, down his chest. Okay, well, just a little startle there, but nothing to even really take into account. On his front leg, his belt under his belly, down his hind leg. Good boy. Good job. Well done. Okay, I'm going to go to his other side. And sometimes it's going to be different on both sides, so don't get too confident. If he's done one side really well, don't jump in on the other side. Start at the beginning again. Go up to his withers. Good boy. And I take it away. And the reason why most people don't train this way is because they don't have the patience for it. It's too slow and it doesn't look as glamorous as if I'm chasing the horse around. And that's not what you want to do, though. That's not how you make good horses. It takes slow, progressive non-glamorous work but like I said that's how you're gonna get get a good horse good boy and I take it away and I go back up to his back and I run it down his hind good good boy good job
Okay, then I'll go up to his, his withers and up to his neck. Good boy. And his front leg. Good. And his chest. Good boy. Two withers. Under his belly. Good. I'll make a little noise. Good boy. And then I give him a cookie. Oh, if I can find a cookie. There you go. Good boy. So you see how you just take it slow? Now obviously he's been exposed to this before, but I did not know for sure whether he had been or not, so I wanted to make sure to check in. And I always start with the plastic bag first because um, for any type of confidence building, because the plastic bag on the end of a stick is the easiest way to uh, teach the horse the pattern. And that's one thing to keep in mind if you're working with a horse that you're training. Horses really like patterns. They learn better in patterns and they find comfort in patterns. So if you establish a pattern, which is very easy to do with a plastic bag and stick, because if, for example, the horse is running around, it's easy for me to stay with them until they stop. And then if, even if the horse is running around, I stay with them, stay with them, stay with them. And then as soon as that horse stops or pauses, I'm going to take it away immediately. So it's easy to handle and it's easy to establish the pattern. So the horse starts to learn when there's commotion, stop. Then you can move on to bigger things that take a little bit more, more work for the handler. Um, but if you establish that pattern with your horse, they're gonna, the, anything new that you introduce to them, I, 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 even if it makes them a little bit nervous at first, as soon as they go, oh yeah, that's this pattern, they'll be comforted by that. They really are creatures of habit. So use the stick and plastic bag to establish the pattern. And then after that, you can move on to a lot of other things. So next, I'm gonna go to the tarp, but there's a lot of things you could go to for, from there. One of my rules is that I always have a tarp on a horse before I'll ride it. And I, for young horses that I'm starting, okay? If they can't walk around with a tarp over them, then sure as heck, I'm not getting on them. So start with the plastic bag. And then after that, personally, I like to go straight to the tarp from there. Good boy. Okay, so what I like to do when I'm working with a tarp is not start out with it all big and scary and unfolded, okay? I like to start out with it folded up. And you know, if you've got a horse that's afraid of these kinds of things, you may even fold it up even more and get it down really little, okay? So it just is gonna depend. Now, again, he was great with the plastic bag and I don't, I think he's probably seen the tarp before and isn't gonna have any issue with it, I'm suspecting. But still, if you've got a horse you think will be afraid of it, fold it up teeny tiny, okay? As I work with him, I start with it small, and then I unfold it once. Do it again, touch him, have him walk over it, unfold it one more crease. Touch him, put it over top of him, put it on the ground, have him walk over it, unfold one more crease. And, and I go on like that. And so again, it, it's this building confidence is kind of boring work. It's not this like, you know, cool, glamorous running around thing that, that you're going to see. But if you do it this way, you're not going to have the issues where you're having to run after your horse because your horses stay calm and you're building their confidence throughout the whole thing instead of scaring them straight, so to speak. You know, I mean, this training stuff, to be honest with you, when I, <laughs> I talked about the, the building confidence being kind of boring, I mean, the definition of a trainer is, is someone that does the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, which happens to also be the, the same definition of insanity. So, might as well get used to it. It's going to take time. And really, to be honest with you, it doesn't actually take more time. Uh, really, when you think about the people that kind of try to, um, you know, run in with a big tarp and throw it over top of their horse and their horse is running around and they're chasing after them and whatever. What, what we're doing here actually takes less time. But like I said, it's not as popular because it's not as glamorous. So for most of you, though, that aren't concerned about the glamour of it, and want to, you know, or looking like some cool cowboy or something like that, but you actually want to have a good, solid, nice horse, I'll tell you, this is the way to do it, okay? If you'd rather keep your horse calm and, and go home at the end of the day without any rope burns, then this is definitely the, the progression that you're going to want to use. So, I start with it folded up. Obviously, he's not very concerned. I'm just going to brush it onto his shoulder a little bit, down his back, down his hind, and take it away, tell him he's good. Good 
boy. Then I'll go to the other side. Brush it on his back, on his side. Good boy. Okay, now I'm just gonna unfold it one. And I'm gonna kinda just put, lay it over his back a little bit. Since he's not concerned about it. Good boy. Good. I'm gonna come to the other side. And I can progress a little bit quicker because he's not concerned about it. If your horse is concerned, then I'll keep it at, at a one fold the whole, you know, until the horse is calm and standing like this. But if your horse is calm and standing like this, then you can just keep, keep unfolding it one at a time. Okay, now I've got it kind of long here. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it over top of his back. Good boy. Good. Okay, and now it's also big enough that I can put it on the ground, and I'm going to ask him to, to step on it or walk over it. Good boy, good. And he gets a cookie. Nicely done. Okay, I'm going to unfold it one more. Come over here to this side. I'm going to rub him with a little bit, and I'm going to put it over his back. So now it's large enough to stay on him, so I'm going to see if he'll walk with it just a little bit. And sometimes horses are fine at a standstill, but then once it starts to move with them, they're like, oh no. So that's why I like to, like to move them around too. Good boy. Good job. Okay, and I'll stop him and give him a cookie. Nicely done. Okay, I'll unfold it one more. Ooh. and ask him to walk over it. Now, one caution for you, having him walk over it. Um, if your horse has shoes on, it can be kind of dangerous. Good boy. Because the nail can um, catch on the tarp, so you wanna be really careful about that. Now, I'm gonna actually go ahead, I'm gonna have him come over it lengthwise, and I'm gonna have him stop on the tarp and give him a cookie while he's on it. Because he's walking over it fine, so let's see if, see if he'll stay on it. Ooh, good boy. Now, out of curiosity, let's back him off. And so I'm just, just testing him. Good boy, well done. Okay. Now I'm gonna pick it up and I'll bring him around a little bit. And I'm gonna throw it up over his back again. See how I'm kind of testing him because he's staying calm. I'm gonna be this is called careless with caution. So the first time I may have put it over his back very gently, but now I'm gonna say, okay, you're real comfortable with it, so maybe I can throw it on you. So it looks like from from a distance, it looks like I'm being careless, but I'm expecting that there's a chance it may upset him. So I'm being careful so that I, you know, I'm making sure that I'm prepared to pull him around or do what's necessary if I need to. So that you're, you're careless with caution. And if you ever want a horse, you think that your, your horse is gonna be, be handled by kids, you sure as heck need a lot of careless with caution because kids have a lot of careless without caution. Good boy. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it off of him and I'll unfold it the rest of the way. I'll shake it around a little bit. Good boy. Oh, what a good boy. He's following me up onto it before I even, even have a chance to ask him to. So I'm gonna have him come up onto it. Good. And he gets a cookie, good boy. Good boy. Good job. Okay, now as the last thing, now that it's completely unfolded, I'm gonna put it in its, its full length and width over top of him. And so it's gonna be draping on him, it's gonna be touching his legs, it's gonna be draping down his butt.
good boy. And like I said, I make this a rule to do this before I'll get on a horse that I'm starting because if they can't handle that, I'm sure as heck not getting on them. Good boy. Good, so it's touching him all over. It's flopping around a little. Good. Ooh, and I'll stop him. You can have a cookie and I'm gonna pull it off. And I'm pretty happy with him. Good boy. So I'm gonna go ahead and saddle him up. We're gonna lunge him just a little bit more with the saddle on. Um, I know he's been saddled. I know he's had a rider on him three times, but it's been a while. So I'm just gonna saddle him up, lunge him around a little bit, and then he'll be done for the day. Yeah, good boy. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just put the pad on him, see if he stands fine, then I'm gonna throw the saddle up on him. If this was the first time he'd ever been saddled, obviously I'd take it all slower. I'd work with the pad for a while. I would definitely not have him tied. I'd have someone holding him or I'd be holding him. And I'd work with the pad for a while and then when he's comfortable with the pad, I'd go ahead and work with a lightweight, like a little kitty saddle, just kind of throwing it off, off and on him. Um, but like I said, he's been saddled before and he's had a rider on him before. So I don't expect any problem with this and he was perfect with the tarp. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw the pad up on him. Good boy, and I'll let him look at it. Good. Good boy. Let him see the saddle cue. Good boy. And then I'm just gonna stand next to him and I'm just gonna swing it a couple times. Make sure that the motions doesn't bother him. And nope, he's kind of looking, but he's not, not moving at all. So I'm just gonna try to gently swing it up on top of him. Good boy. Good job. Well, wiggle it around a little bit. Ooh. Ooh. Good boy. Ooh. Ooh. Good boy. And he's just fidgeting around a little bit, but he's he's really not getting too worried. He's just kind of getting a little bit fidgety since I'm I'm kind of rocking the saddle back and forth. Good boy. Ooh. So I'm just gonna keep rocking it a little bit until he can calm down with it. Not that he's getting too upset. He's just a little, little fidgety about it. Good boy. Good. Good. Well done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead around to the other side and let the girth down. Good boy. And I'm actually going to untie him for cinching up. So I'm going to back him up a little step. back him up a little bit more. I don't really like to have the horses usually in between me and the fence because I don't want them to feel claustrophobic. Good, so I like them to have a little bit of room to move off and not into me. Good boy. Good. Good boy. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and carefully reach under and I'm going to kind of pat his belly a little bit first. Now as you've seen, I've had this wrap on him so I'm not really concerned about it. He's, he's used to having something touching him there, for sure. But I'm gonna go ahead and gently cinch him up because the cinch is gonna be tighter than what the wrap is. And I make sure that I, I don't have too much slack in my lead rope because if he runs off, I wanna, wanna be able to try to stop him. Ooh, 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 good boy, good. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of slowly tighten the cinch. Obviously, he's finally decided he likes cookies and is more concerned about them than the cinch. Who? And when he moves, I just bump his lead rope a couple times. Who? Who? But I make sure I stay in this safe zone right here, right in the center. Because he can go circles around me. I don't want him to, but at least I'm safe here. Who? 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 Good. Good boy. Good. 
slowly tightening up a little more. Ooh. Good. Good boy. And ooh. I'm gonna put it right there. It's not it's not tight, but it's it's definitely ooh. Ooh. When he stops. Ooh. Good, good boy. It's definitely snug enough to keep the saddle there. Then I'm gonna gently bring the back cinch. Now he definitely may have never had a back cinch on. So I'm just flopping it a little bit on his belly. And then I'm just gonna put it, looks like the first pole is gonna be plenty snug. Like I said, he may have never had a back cinch before. And if there's anything gonna make him buck, a back cinch for the first time will, that's for sure. So I'm gonna be really careful as I walk him off. He may feel that back cinch up against his, his soft spot of his tummy as we walk off and it may upset him and he may kick out or, or buck. So I'm gonna be very careful as I walk him off. Okay, so now I'm gonna send him around a little bit with the saddle. And just because the horse is calm walking with the saddle, don't get too comfortable and assume that once he trots off, he's gonna be equally as calm because he's gonna be feeling it moving on him a lot more. And it could, could upset him a little bit more once he gets trotting and moving around. So just cause, like I said, just if your horse walks off nice, don't, don't get too comfortable here but we've done a lot of preparation with him. And like I said, with him, he's had this done before, but I'm kind of giving you instruction for, for if you're working with a horse that, that hasn't done this before. Okay, he's walking nice, so I'm asking him to trot. Good boy. Good boy. And I want him to, to keep moving. He doesn't have to do a whole lot. Oh, he's got to go to the bathroom. All right, come on. Good boy. And then I'm gonna go ahead, after he gets past his wooden fence here, I'm gonna go ahead and ask him to walk. And walk. What a good boy. Look at how smart you are. It's gotta stay walking though. I don't want him to stop just yet. And when he gets over to this wooden side, I'm gonna stop him again. And I'm gonna do this several, for, you know, for the next several times I lunge him, always stop him along the fence to make sure that he just really gets in the habit of always stopping straight. Ooh, ooh, good boy, good, good boy, well done. Okay, I'm gonna send him off the other way. Now, if he gets a little bit more tension in the rope than I want him to, he's not pulling on me, but as he comes around this one side right here, he, he may put a little more tension in it. And so I'm just gonna use my hands very lightly to just give little bump bumps until he's back to the, the amount of tension that I'm comfortable with. Because if you let it go where they, they can put a little more tension on there than you want, and you never say anything about it, then that tension's gonna build and build until eventually your horse is pulling you around. So I like to have a certain certain amount of, of weight in my hand, and if it goes any more than that, then I'm gonna start kind of bumping on him and say, hey, get off that. Good boy. Good, much better through there this time. Okay, uh, after he gets past this, this next side over here, I'm gonna ask him to walk. 
and walk. Good boy. And when he gets up to the wooden side, I'm going to ask him to stop. Good. And who? Good boy. Well done. Good job. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just pull a saddle and let him be done for today. That was real good. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing with Pippin, the younger one here, as I did with Mary a minute ago. So I'm just going to send him around on the lunch line, let him warm up. And this gives me a chance to just kind of check in with him to see where his mind's at today. Good boy. I'm going to ask him to trot. It's a little bit slippery, so if he starts playing around too much, then he's going to slip. So I kind of bumped on him a couple of times to get him to, to come down and pay a little more attention. boy. And like I said with Mary, there's a certain amount of weight in my hand when I'm lunging that I'm okay with and anything more than that I'll start to bump a little bit. And he's not pulling on me but every so often it'll kind of be more weight than what I like. So I'll bump him on the halter a little bit just with my hand. Good boy. And that just keeps him light. Okay, I'm going to ask him to walk. And walk. Good. Perfect. Excellent walk. Now he's got to stay walking though. Let him go around once and again I want him to stay walking. Once I've told him to walk, walk, then I'll scold him a little bit if he goes to something different. Because now I'm starting to expect a little bit more from him and I want to see them stay in the gate that I asked them to. Walk. And I'd like to ask him to stop over here against this wooden gate, walk, but I'm not going to do that if he's trying to trot off. He's got to stay at a good walk first, and then we'll think about coming down to a stop. So see how he's wanting to turn into me? I'm just going to send him back out. Good. Ooh. Ooh. Good. Ooh. Good. Good boy. Good. Now I'm going to change directions. Good. And I'm okay with him trotting off for now. Good. Good boy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask him to walk. Take a deep breath and walk. Perfect. What a good boy. He has to keep going though. I don't want him to stop or come to me. Good boy. And if he keeps his walk, then when we get over to this wooden side, I'll ask him to stop. And see how when I first initially ask them to walk, um, I'll, I'll give them some time and be a little bit, um, a little more gracious about it. I'll give them a couple steps and then, then kind of get after them slowly. But once I've asked them to walk and they've come down to a walk, when they trot off, I'll, I'll get after them a little quicker. Now I didn't ask him to stop yet. Walk. Good. And unlike with the first time with Mary, how he was reading my body language, I wasn't giving him any, any body language cues yet for, for stopping. I was still just waiting to see if he'd keep the walk. Walk. Good.
good. Now I'm just going to ask him to walk along the fence with me a little bit, just as a little exercise. Walk. Good. Now I'll let him come off. So he was kind of wanting to squirt through and in a way. Me standing there and that fence there was making a little bit of a shoot and he was a little bit uncomfortable with it. So I had him walk along the fence within the confines of that chute a little bit longer and make him walk through it. Good boy. Good. Now he's more comfortable with that position. Good. And hoo. And I'm going to not let him turn towards me. Good boy. Well done. Good job. Good boy. Okay, I think that's pretty good warm up for him right now. And I'm going to go ahead and we'll start with the plastic bag again. Okay, and I already explained everything to you with Mary when I did it with him. So I'm just going to go through the motions with him and if anything else comes up, then I'll go ahead and explain to you what I'm doing. But you already kind of got the introduction to it. So if he wants to look at it, I'll let him. Good boy. I, I actually encourage that. If they're curious enough to look at it, I'll, I'll let him for sure. I'm just going to make some noise. Good boy. Good. Okay, now I'm going to touch him on the withers. Good. Good boy. Take it away. Bring it back to his withers. Run it down his back. And on his rump. Down his hind leg. Good boy. I'll take it away. Good job. Bring it back to his withers. Down his shoulder. His belly. Good boy. And I take it away. Good job. Back to the withers. Up his neck. His chest. Down his front leg. All over. Making some noise. If I can bring it up by his head. Good boy. Well done. And you really couldn't ask for a better response than that. Good boy. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And just like I said with Mary, just because one side's good doesn't mean that you can automatically jump in with the other side. Good. If he wants to look at it, and I'm going to let him. Like I said, I'll encourage that. Bring it up to his withers. Good. Take it off. Rub it down his back. Good. To his rump. Down his leg. Good boy. I'm going to take it off. Well done. Good job. Now this time I'll rub it on his side, under his belly. And where you go just kind of depends on the horse. If you've got a horse that's more sensitive on his hind leg, then you may um, start on the front leg instead or vice versa. It doesn't really matter which order you go into. I definitely would start at the withers. Um, is the, the least confrontational place for the horse, the withers or the shoulder. Um, but then from there, you can kind of decide where you want to go with it. Good boy. Well done. Now I'll make a little bit more noise. Good. Good boy. Exactly what we like to see. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the tarp. Okay, so now I've got the tarp here folded up again, and he's going to sniff it and look at it, and like I said, I encourage that curiosity. That's going to be your best friend when you're trying to build confidence. If they're curious about something, then they're, they're not going to be really afraid of it. Good boy. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bring it up to his side, and rub his side and his back with it. Ooh. Ooh. And I'm going to stay here until he stops. And then the moment he stops, I take it away. Good boy. Now I'll go to the other side. Rub his back and his side with it. Good boy. Okay. Now I'll unfold it one and go ahead and kind of put it over his back. Good. And have him walk a few steps. Good. Good boy. Good job. Good. So I'll unfold it one more. And 
gonna go ahead and ask him to, to walk on it or put a foot on it at least. Now I don't want him coming over by me. I want him to go over it, good boy. But I don't want him following right behind me because sometimes they'll get halfway over it and startle a little. And so I don't want a horse to jump into me or jump on top of me. So I make him stay next to me and not behind me, good boy. Now I'll put it over his back on this side. Good. Ooh. 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 I stay with him play stops and I'll take it off. Good boy. Then I'll walk him around. Good. And same thing when I'm walking them, if they've got something on them or anything like that, I don't want him to be right behind me in case he spooks. I don't want him jumping on top of me, so I like him to be off to the side a little bit. Ooh. Good boy. Nope. Now I don't want him really turning towards me or pushing into me at all. So I'm going to just ask him to move off. Good boy. Now I'm going to unfold it one more. Good. And he's already coming over to it before I even ask him. Good. Good boy. Good. And then again, out of curiosity, I'll back him off a bit. Back. Back. Good boy. Good job. Back. All the way. Back. Good. Good boy. Well done. Kind of move it around a bit, make some noise. Ooh, ooh. Good. Walk him around and see how it's draping down on his sides and kind of touching on his legs a little bit now. Good boy. Good job. Well done. Okay, then I'll go ahead and unfold it the rest of the way. What a good boy you are. Back. Back. Good. Good. Okay, I'm going to ask him to walk over it. Good. Stop in the middle. Nicely done. What a good boy. You can walk the rest of the way over. Good. Okay, now I'm going to put the fully unfolded tarp over top of him. And notice how when I put the tarp on him, I kind of switch sides back and forth so that you're not working more on any particular side. Oops. So as you can see, it's down around his rump, it's up on his neck, it's touching his legs. Good boy. Now I'll have him walk around a little bit. Good. Well done, good boy. Good. And then I'll give him a treat while it's still on him. Good boy. Okay, then I pull it off and we're going to go ahead and move on to the saddle. Good boy. 
So with him, he has been saddled before, but not quite as much, and he's not had a rider on him. So I'm going to just go a little bit slower with him and check in and give him some time to think about it. I'll start with the pad. I'll let him see it. Good boy. And then I'll just kind of rub his side with it. Good. Kind of flop it a little. Good. Flop it on top of him. And he's not really being the least bit concerned at all. Good boy. Go to the other side. Rub him with it. Flop it on him a little bit. Good boy. Good job. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and grab the saddle. And if he starts moving around where I'm having trouble holding the, the saddle, because this is a big, normal, heavy saddle. Um, normally, when a horse hasn't been saddled before, I'll use a light kitty saddle so I can kind of flop it around easy or toss it to the ground if I need to. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with this with him and see where he's at, because I know he's been saddled several times before. Um, but if I do have trouble, then I'm going to call in help and have someone come hold him. Let him look at it if he wants to. Good boy. And just like I did with his brother, I'm going to just flop it a little bit here, make sure that that motion doesn't bother him. And then I'm going to gently flop it up on him. Good boy. Good. And I'm going to make, have him stop and just stand for a minute. Good boy. Then I'll go ahead and kind of shift it around and, and get it into place. Good, well done. So definitely next time I'm sure he'll, he can stand tied to be saddled. Good. Okay, I'll come around to this side and let the girth down. Kind of let things flop on him a little bit, just gently, but I want him to know it's there on his side. Good boy. Start with the front cinch. I'll be careful, rub on his belly a little bit, and then just bring it up and, and let him feel that it's there. And then I'm going to slowly tighten it up. You don't want to get too, too tight too fast. And make them nervous. Okay, I got some loops around and I'm just going to kind of slowly Rock him a little bit, so it just slowly gets a little bit tighter. Good boy. And I don't have it really, really tight, but it's definitely tight enough to keep the saddle in place. Then I'm gonna reach down, rub his belly again, grab the back cinch. And a lot of the reason that um, when, you, when I start with the horse, I don't usually have much trouble with the cinch is because I do the wraps. So if, you, if your horse has worn the cinch wrap a lot, or like on this one, I have a figure eight that um, has a cinch wrap added with the extra bit of um, wrap that's left. So if you work your horse in the cinch wrap a lot, then when you go to cinch them up, they're not going to be so touchy about it as a lot of times other horses that haven't had that work. Now once again, just like I said with Mary, especially since they may have never had a back cinch on before, just because he stands here okay doesn't mean I'm going to let my guard down. I'm going to walk him off carefully because once he feels that back cinch rubbing up on his flank, he, he may get a little bit nervous about it. I'm not expecting that he will. He's been very calm through all this and responded really well, so I think he'll be fine. I'm just warning you for your horse that it, that it may they may stand okay and then walk off and, and take off bucking or something. So I'm just warning you, be careful when you walk him off at that first. Good boy. I don't want him behind me again. Good. Well done, good boy. Good. Good job.
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get the lunge line and I'm gonna lunge him around with the saddle on a little bit. Okay, so now that he's saddled, I'm gonna go ahead and move him off a little bit. I actually want him to go the other way. Good. That is one thing that I'll be really strict about is the direction. Now, I can, I can be um, um, pretty lenient with the gate sometimes. As far as, you know, when I first send them off, I'm not going to make a big deal about what gate they move off in. Um, it's fine. But I, I will be a little bit of a stickler about it. When I pick a direction, I want them to keep that direction. I, I definitely will not allow a horse to turn and, and switch direction on me just when they feel like it. Good boy. Okay, let's ask him to trot. Good boy. And again, it is a little bit slick, so he's going to have to really pay attention to his footing and not goof off, which he's, he's figuring out that he's having to pay a little better attention to it than what he, he normally is used to. So right there, when he comes around to that side, he's kind of putting a little more weight in my hand than I like. So as he comes around, I'm going to get ready to kind of bump him a little bit. So right there, I'll just give a little bump, bump. Good. A little bump, bump. Push him forward. Good boy. A little bump, bump right there. Good. And he's not pulling on me real bad. Like I said, I just like to keep him really light. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and ask him to walk. Take a deep breath. Perfect. Good boy. Good job. If he keeps his walk, when he comes around to this fence, I'll ask him to stop straight. Good. Ooh. Good boy. Well done. Good job. Okay, send him off the other way. Good. Good. Okay, go ahead and ask him to walk. Take a deep breath. Walk. Perfect. What a good boy. These guys are really fast learners. I mean, this is only my second time lunging each of them, and they both immediately picked up on the walk cue, so I'm really pleased with that. So if he keeps his walk, then when we come around to the fence, I'll go ahead and ask him to, to stop. And, ooh, excellent job. Very well done. Good boy. Okay, I'm going to pull his saddle and put him away, and he's doing great too.